Hi everybody, this is Mark Heaps for PSD Toots, and I wanted to share another of the series of Filter Forge reviews um, that I've been doing for PSD Toots, and I believe this is the last one in the series. Um, I have a personal project that I've been working on uh, to make a, a fun little children's book for my two kids. And so I don't really have a lot of time, and uh, I need to be able to take advantage of some filters to create that illustrative effect that I wanted inside of the children's book. So if I just uh, jump over to Photoshop real quick here, you can see I did some pretty simple little illustrations inside of Photoshop. Uh, nothing special here, just, just using some brushes and doodled out a couple of sketches. So there's the swimming sketch. There's going to be a page about kicking a ball. I've got another one about flying a kite outside and then one about skateboarding. And so the whole idea of the book is just letting my kids know, like, hey, you know, as you get older, it's fun to get outside and play and uh, maybe not stay inside and be stuck at the computer all day long like your dad is. Uh, so anyway, I figured, uh, you know, this has kind of got the story idea down, but what I really need to do is figure out what kind of treatment I want. So this is where Filter Forge came in, and I just want to show you guys um, some samples and then what the final look was of each of these frames and then I'll show you how I actually did it with Filter Forge. So here's the first uh, look here. So this is the swimming pool frame and basically what I had done is I drew a uh, just black outline of my sketch, my idea for this page, colored this in and then from here I made a merged copy of these which is just your uh, command shift option E or Control shift alt e if you're on pc and uh, let me just show you that i'll just target this top layer here hit command shift option e and that makes a little merged copy of those visible layers without deleting or compressing those layers together so now i've got something that i can work with and make uh... my filter application to so i, I explored filter forge they've got a lot of different uh... creative filters in there one they have is called watercolor and i really liked the look of that effect it, it added some cool texture um, I like the way that it treated the edges. It sort of became very organic. Uh, I really like the way that it actually uh, affected these splashes of water that I had painted out here. Um, but, you know, I still wasn't sure about this one, so I played around with a few others. The next one they had is a much more uh, sort of abstract, uh, creative, almost like, a, like an ink spread uh, kind of creative filter, and it's called Dabber. And you can see there it, the way that it actually traces the outlines that I had drawn and it adds these variable amounts of grain depending on what the contrast is, uh, how it recognizes edges. I still think this is a really cool effect and uh, I've actually used this on a few photographs, but I don't know if this is going to work for the children's book. This might be a little too abstract for my two-year-old um, and especially my eight-month-old. Um, although what does an eight-month-old know, right? I mean seriously. Uh, but what I did decide on was the sketchy paint filter. And I really like what this did. Um, the way that it added some texture, the way that it interpreted the line edging, it created some diffusion, uh, like the cross hatching that's happening in here from the brush type. Um, all of this just felt really, really believable to me. And, you know, it was going to save me a, a lot of time. So I really, really fell in love with this one. And I just want to show you what those other frames turned out like. So here's a little before and after. So there's the original. And there it is after sketchy paint. Okay, so let me just go through some of these others here. Here's another frame with the kick ball, and here it is with the sketchy paint applied to it. Here's the kite flying frame that we looked at earlier with the sketchy paint applied to it. And then the skateboarding frame, and I did a little bit more detail with some highlights and shadows in this one to see how it react, but sketchy paint handled it beautifully. I really, really like this. It's just, it's just a great mix of analog textures and effects. So I thought this is going to work for me, and that's what I'm going to use in the project. Now let me show you how I actually made it. Okay, so here is the, uh, the way that I approached making these illustrations. And there's nothing too complex to them, which is what I like. Uh, a simple approach, simple technique, use the right tool, get the job done well and fast. Um, so let me just go ahead and create a new layer here. I'm going to fill that with a white background. I'm just going to hit... Uh, Apple or Command Delete, which uh, fills with your background color. So my background color right now is white. You can see over here. Uh, you can do Control Delete if you're on PC. Um, but what I'm going to do here is create that white layer. Then I'm going to make a new layer. I'm just going to do that with Command Shift Option N. Uh, at this point, I'm going to stop translating PC shortcuts for Mac shortcuts because I think you get the idea. Um, and the way that I did the drawings was I just go over here and grab the brush, and I'm using one of the new mixer brushes that we saw in CS5. 
Now, I know everybody's transitioning to CS6, so this probably will be one of the last demos that I do in CS5, um, but I wanted to round out the series of FilterForge reviews uh, with the exact same version of the application. So uh, this brush here, if you see under the brush presets, the reason I chose this particular mixer brush is it's the one with the finest tip here, and I just like the way that this tapers as I'm using my stylus on my Wacom tablet. Um, so from here, I just sort of would go in and uh, draw freely onto the canvas depending on what the scene was that I wanted to have. So let's say, for example, that I wanted to do something about pizza. Well, I could go in here and draw a quick little circle. Wow, that's a horrible circle. But, you know, maybe, maybe it's a true Italian-style organic pizza or something like that. So uh, anyway, here's my little pizza sketch. And then I'm going to go in here and maybe draw some pieces of pepperoni. Spread those out on the pizza. Okay, and then we'll do some uh, some little thin lines in here. So I got to kind of just be light with my my whack on a little bit, and I'm just sort of freehanding this. I'm not really using any quick keys like Shift or Shift Click or anything. I kind of I kind of like that sketchiness that happens when my hand wobbles. So I'm just gonna leave that as it is. So I've got my my pizza drawing here. And I'm going to uh, create a new layer beneath this one. If you hold the command key and press the new layer icon, it'll actually make a new layer below for you. And I'm just going to go in here and grab some colors. So for my pizza crust, maybe I'm going to grab a nice sort of golden brown color. I think that works pretty good. And I'm just going to go in here and fill this in. Now, there's two ways to do this. I could paint the whole thing in, but it looks like I closed this off pretty good. So I'm just going to grab my magic wand, go back to my drawing layer, select that little piece of the crust that goes all the way around. Um, then from here, I'm going to go ahead and choose Select, Modify, Expand, and tell it to expand by two pixels. You can see that there. When I choose this, it just moves in to the black outline area enough so that when I go back to the layer I'm going to put my color into, I can just hit Option Delete this time to fill with my foreground color, and that fills in my crust. So now I can start looking at my cheese. So let's grab kind of a, a good yellow color for my cheese. Sort of a yellowish white color, I think. And from here, I could do the same thing. I could make that selection again, or I can just try to paint this one. So if I grab my brush here, make my brush really, 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 really big, sort of fill this in. Now, I don't want to risk going over the crust. Let me undo that. I'm going to change the blend mode of this brush to behind. This way when I'm painting, I don't have to worry about overlapping the crust. It'll paint directly behind the pixels that are already there. So I can just sort of sketch this in, fill it in pretty fast, and go from there. Now if I want some variance, I could I could go in and add some dabs of color, and we may, we may end up doing that in a second. Um, get some, my pepperoni pieces. Let's go ahead and grab some, some sort of dark reddish kind of color pepperoni. Get my brush back down a little bit smaller. Oh, now I've got it still set to behind, which means it's not going to work. So let me set that back to normal. I'm just going to paint on top of this. Now, if you're really, really paranoid, uh, you could create a new layer for each one of these, and that definitely works. Um, but let me finish painting this out. You guys can watch, and I'm going to speed up the video, and then uh, we'll get to the point where I'm actually going to put this in Filter Forge. Okay? Okay, so I've added some more detail here. I've got my outline layer, I've got my paint layer, and I've done some little extra details on this layer using the multiply blend mode to just go in and drop a couple of shades for details inside of the, the illustration here just for fun. Just to make it a little bit more sketchy and kind of playful, sort of almost like a comic book. Um, but now we're at that point where I want to actually get this thing into Filter Forge and see what these creative filters can do. So what I'm going to do is just go to the top of my layers here and I'm going to hit Command Shift Option E again and get a merged version of that. And uh, let me just go from here and we'll go to Filter. Now I've already installed Filter Forge. Um, it's really easy to download and install and once you've installed it, uh, it shows up in the menu down here under Filter Forge, Filter Forge 3. And this will launch the program for me. And if you haven't used Filter Forge before, uh, I recommend watching some of my other reviews of this particular plugin. Um, but what's really, really cool is the way that they organize everything. So over here on the left, you've got the types of filter categories. So you can see there's 
patterns and stone filters and different frame filters. Uh, but over here we have creative filters, which is what we're looking at today. And once you've chosen a category, over here on the right, you get all of the filters that belong to that particular category. So here's some of those ones that we were talking about earlier. Uh, watercolor painting, which was one of the ones that I talked about. Uh, there's Dabber, uh, version 0.7. Um, and there were a few others that I had tried, like comic book, uh, engraving. Um, in my last review, I used the blueprint drawing for the car poster. Um, but for this one, I ended up deciding on sketchy painting. And uh, I just think this one works really, really well. And you'll see as this is rendering out, um, sketchy painting has nine factory presets down here. Um, they're all very, very similar in texture and applique. Um, but, you know, there's some color variants, obviously. But, uh, you know, it's just enough so that you can quickly scan through and pick one. Now, if you want to get more finite, you could go under settings, and there's a lot of controls in here. You can get into different amounts of density, um, highlight density, shadow density, uh, the lowest level of detail that you want, the highest level of detail that you want, um, where you want brightness and contrast. What are your main details? And this is how much you want to keep and retain some of that original value in your sketch. Um, vibrance if you want the saturation to get pumped up and you can see here I've got this up to 77 so my reds and my yellows started getting pumped up a lot which is why uh, I knew that was going to happen from the other sketches so you'll notice when I did the original drawing I actually drew it kind of desaturated um, and that's why I had that in mind so there it is it's a really really cool look uh, I definitely think this matches the rest of the illustration so I'm just gonna go ahead and hit apply and now this will drop back into Photoshop and uh, when it's done, I'll have a pizza page for my children's illustration story. So I'm not sure how that ties in with the original concept of getting my kids outside, but I know I love pizza, so why not have it be one of the favorite things to eat after you've played outside. Thanks so much. My name is Mark Heaps, and uh, this was Filter Forge 3's Creative Filters for PSD Toots. Have a good one, guys.